Hey, 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 happy day, Pajama Grandma, Sharon Horton Elstrom here with another lesson in our journey through the book, Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. We are breaking it down day by day, step by step to make it really simple for you to apply these principles and apply these concepts to your life. Today, it's all about creating your market. Now, I specifically said create your market because a lot of people will teach you to go out and find a market, find a niche, and then start com start selling or doing your thing in that particular niche or group of... A niche is just a group of people that all have a common interest. And if you go and find a niche nowadays, you're in trouble because that means that there's already a gazillion competitors and it's harder than ever to stand out and be seen in that sea, that red ocean, so to speak, where the waters are bloody because there's so much competition. And Russell uses that example throughout the book, the red ocean, blue ocean. And I'll let you go ahead and read about that instead of me trying to explain it because I think that he does a better job of it than I do. But the whole point is <clears throat> we all start out in one of three main markets. Every business can fall into or needs to be able to fall into one of the three main markets. And those three main markets are health, wealth, and relationships. And I'm going to make some worksheets for you to make this super simple. I'm going to keep doing every day a daily sheet that has your action steps that you need to take to break this down in little bitty, teeny tiny, actionable pieces. <laughs> every one of us can decide which of the three main markets we're in. And if you take that step and if you do that step, step one, then that starts to get you momentum. And so then pretty soon step two, step three, step four fall right into place. So step one today is to decide which of the three main markets, health, wealth, or relationship, does your area of expertise fall into right now? So for example, if I am selling to restaurant and bar owners, my area of, and my, my area of expert, okay, that's, that's why I want to sell too, so I'm jumping way ahead. But my expertise is in running food-related small to medium-sized businesses. You can do some large ones too, but mostly small to medium is my personal favorite and my personal experience. So what market do small to medium-sized restaurants or bars fall into? They could fall into any of the above, depending on how I want to twist or create my message. For example, sex is used to sell pretty much everything, sex and relationships. So obviously if I can use, you know, sex and relationships to sell razors or to sell deodorant or to sell cosmetics or to sell just about any product, just about any product can be turned into any one of these markets, depending on how I want to slant it. So since I'm working with chronic pain for and pain for my trip through the Expert Secrets Project along with you all, I am going to, of course, decide mine is health because chronic pain is directly related to our health. So obviously of the three main markets, health is my main market. So decide whatever it is that you've decided or are thinking about, you don't even have to decide yet because I'll tell you what, we change our minds as we go through this process. I went through the entire process with chronic pain and now I'm working through it again and I'm actually refining and changing my mind in terms of who I want to talk to and how I'm going to speak with them as part of going through this process again. So the first step is to pick your main market, the, one of the three main markets that you're going to go after. The next step, each of these three main markets has got I think, I think that Russell says dozens or a dozen submarkets, but I honestly think there's more submarkets than that nowadays. As the internet becomes more sophisticated, as buyers become more sophisticated, the markets tend to segment more and more and more because everybody is trying to carve out their own little piece of the pie within this whole um, ecosystem because the internet marketing world is an ecosystem in and of itself. But each of the main markets can then, and these are graphics right from the book, can be divided into a lot of different sub-markets. And then with each of these little sub-markets, there's all different niches. 
And our goal and our objective, so your second step is going to be to decide which of the submarkets you're in. So, for example, I said I'm going to be in health. So some of the submarkets in health would be diet, nutrition, uh, strength training, weight loss, um, and and those would be the main, you know, some of the main categories. Mine, I'm adding pain because I think that pain is another whole sub market of the health niche. You might be in wealth. Wealth can be any different way of making money. It could be about it can be about you know jobs. It could be about owning different types of businesses. It could be about real estate. It could be about investing. It could be about crypto and all the stuff that's coming out with that now. But those would be the sub markets. And then each of those sub markets has a whole bunch of little niches associated with it. But the step two, step one, which the three big markets do you want to approach your area of expertise in or which area of expertise which area does your expertise currently fall into what makes the most logical sense and then step two which of the sub markets am i wanting to address am i going to go in now i personally have experience in all three of these markets and a lot of these different sub markets i could actually go out and i could do a real estate course I could do a real estate course. Actually, as a matter of fact, I did do a real estate course back about eight years ago. And the sub so the submarket was real estate for making money. So it would have been wealth, real estate, and then my submarket was a niche was actually foreclosures and short sale negotiations. Um, and that's would be refined down even more today, but that's what it was eight years ago. So then step three is we want to carve out our space in that ecosystem. We need to decide what our little piece of the world is going to be. And there's a couple of things that are really important when we're working with this part of our decision-making process. Tomorrow I'll go ahead and like fix these ahead of time so that I don't have to do such a bad job with my graphics. <laughs> and I know they show up backwards, but I'm just recording the message here. And then in your homework section, I will go ahead and put the homework sheet so it makes a lot more sense. So again, another diagram from the book, you've got the, one of the three main markets, your submarket, and then all of these different niches. And you want to create your own blue ocean or your own unique special niche. And we go about that in different ways, but we do it for a really specific reason. Number one, if we carve out our own niche, we are creating a place where we don't have to compete with a whole bunch of other people. If you're to create something, another Me Too offer, or if you just start up another business that has a lot of competition, you're going to struggle because there's a lot of competition already. So what we really want to do is we want to create our own unique thing, our own unique niche, our own unique spin on whatever it is we want to do and whatever expertise we have so that People that are in the sub niche or the sub niche in the sub market with us, all of these people oh, that are in the sub market with us. So if this is my health sub market and these are all the different sub market businesses, I want to create something that complements what they're already doing. I don't want to create something that is competitive. And the same is true with my niche. When I'm creating my niche for this sub market, I want to make sure that what I create, these other people would be excited about and want to promote because they can become my best strategic partners. So, for example, if my niche is, if I'm health, pain, chronic pain, I think it has to go down one more category now. So I'm breaking it down one more because I just did it before when I went through. I did pain and then chronic pain was my niche. And chronic pain in and of itself is really a submarket. And it's a gigantic submarket. So this time as I'm going through, chronic pain would be my sub submarket. And I have to ask myself as I'm creating the different, as I brainstorm out all the different niches for chronic pain, would the other people and the other people providing services to people with chronic pain, the other niches, would they be, I'm going to ask a whole bunch of questions about it, but can I create something that is complementary to them and not competing with them? Now, my thing is creating a chronic pain protocol, a strategic personalized chronic pain protocol for each person that has chronic pain. Well, the reason that's pretty cool is number one, there isn't one that really exists for people. And number two, 
that opens up the opportunity for all of the different things that are in that protocol, me to partner with different service providers, different modalities, different experts in those areas, and then send my people that are doing their plan to those experts in those areas so that they can provide services. So it's win-win for everybody. I just provide the framework and they have the ability to actually fulfill on that framework. And so I know that I, I'm pretty confident that they'll be excited. Actually, I've already been interviewing them on my podcast. So I know that they'll be excited to have a platform that doesn't compete with them, that actually encourages people to seek them out and provide them with more business. So the first thing we do, <coughs> again, is we identify what we want our niche to be. And then we start asking questions about that niche. Because my niche was originally something very different. And it did compete with other people in the market. And so that didn't work for me. But as I ask myself these questions and I go through the process of, they're in there in the book, but I'm going to create a worksheet for us. It helps us to hone in on what it is exactly that we want to provide. So for example, um, as we're looking at our submarket, you know, my hot market is wealth, my submarket is real estate, and my niche is flipping houses on eBay. That's one of the examples that Russell gives in the book. And there again, I think that you might have to refine that even more because I suspect that at this point, there's a whole bunch of people offering how to flip houses on eBay. Now, I didn't go look that up and I'm not going to. You can if you want. But I suspect the way the markets continue to evolve and develop is that people have moved into that. And keep in mind, whatever you do, the reason you want to put yourself into it and your personal expert advice and create things in your own voice is then people can't just knock them off. If we create a course or if we create a product or if we create something that's easily copied or duplicatable, other people will copy us. And so the more of yourself that you can inject into your niche, into your ocean, the more you can create and carve out your own unique thing, the harder it is for people to steal your stuff and copy it. He gives a lot of examples of how to do the one, two, three, the core market, the sub market, and then your niche. But I, like I said, I think it's developed and evolved even in the years since he wrote this book and that you almost have to take it down one more category because all of the niches have almost become red oceans. I mean, think of anything. I've been really paying attention to the online world for about the last year, a little over a year, and Things like Facebook ads and coaching and high ticket coaching and um, remember it used to be, well, you probably don't remember, but it used to be Google AdWords and SEO and everything and everything kind of changes and evolves and now it's going from Facebook ads to everybody is selling high ticket coaching and you know, that's just the way the markets evolve. So my opinion is it has to go down one more, we have to niche it down one more category, but that, that doesn't matter. For, for this, we, if we can just get down to three, we're doing really well right now. So some questions you want to ask yourself about your decided niche or category are, would people in my sub-market, would people in the sub-market of chronic pain and the, all the niches that are, are, are doing chronic pain, would they be excited about my new niche? Will these people be excited about what it is that I'm thinking about providing services or products in that area of expertise? Yes or no? Are you irrationally passionate about the topic? Do you love this topic? Are you passionate about this topic? Yes or no? Either you are or you aren't. If you're, if you're bleh on it, it's not going to be a great place to start. That is why I'm so excited about working on chronic pain. That's what kept leading me to chronic pain because I've been in business for Ever, you know, 37 years. I started my first business when I was 13. I guess 35, 35 years. How old am I? 58 minus 13. Whatever. Not doing math today. Obviously, my brain's not working. But you, are you passionate about the topic? A lot of times we start doing something and working on an expert secrets type thing like this. Like I started working on stress. The very first time I started reading this and working through this and going through the certification program for ClickFunnels, I picked stress as the thing I was working on because I had just gotten out of a super duper 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 stressful situation. 
a business situation. So I didn't want to do a business thing. I should have, but I didn't want to. And so I was doing it and going through it for stress. But I wasn't passionate about stress. I was passionate about getting rid of stress. So are you passionate about your topic? Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do some research. Go online just for 10 or 15 minutes and it won't even take that long because as soon as you run a Google search, you'll get a ton of results. Do a Google search online and look for forums and message boards and social groups dedicated to your topic. So my topic's chronic pain. I've already done this, but I'll go do it again. I know that there's a ton of Facebook groups, forums, message boards, Quora topics, um, any place that you would want to go and find more information about my submarket. Because I'm calling, instead of pain, I did it for pain, but I think it's got to be chronic pain. Because there's a difference between pain and chronic pain, acute pain and chronic pain. They're dealt with very differently. And pretty much everything that they do nowadays in the medical industry for chronic pain is actually really more suited toward acute pain. Thus the problems with chronic pain issues. Um, so go out and list and find, I would say find at least 10. If you can't find 10 sources of information on your topic, it might be time to rethink the topic. Message me and we will discuss it. But you should be able to just do Google your topic. So if I go chronic pain forums, chronic pain message boards, chronic pain FAQ, which stands for frequently asked questions, chronic pain groups, chronic pain Facebook groups. I ought to be able to come up with a list of 10 in about 30 seconds for my topic. And if I can't, if I can't come up with it for my submarket topic, probably not a great niche, probably either too narrow down or maybe nobody's creating any information or products for that. And that's a huge warning sign that we want to pick something else. Next, after we do that, and actually this is the beginning of funnel hacking, by the way. And funnel hacking to me is just research, doing your homework, doing, you know, doing your due diligence, like we would say in real estate, or doing a competitive analysis like I used to do for quality control when I was in corporate America, or a SWOT analysis. It's got a lot of different names, but really funnel hacking is nothing new. It's just a way of looking at what's going on around you and making smart decisions based on the information that you find. Next, we're going to list our market's own special language because if we're in a good market, it will have its own special language. People in pain have their own language. People in chronic pain have a more refined, they have their own language as well. Things like spoonie. I actually had to look up what a spoonie was because I, I haven't been involved in the chronic pain market. I've been a chronic pain experiencer for decades, but I wasn't in that market. I was out doing, living my life and living in the business world, which also has its own special language. The internet marketing world has its own special language. And I've, I've had to learn that over the last year or so. And it's really hard now because once you learn those terms and, and things, you start to use them automatically, but it makes it really hard for the people that you're talking to or trying to communicate with to understand what you're talking about. My family has no idea what a funnel is. My family has no idea what a lot of things that I talk about are. And so I have to be careful about that and remember who I'm talking to. But your niche, your group will have its own language. Go out, start learning some of those things, jot down some of the words that you know and hear often because you're gonna to wanna to use those words and use those terminology so that your ideal people know that you're talking to them. And as you build your tribe, you'll probably develop even your more specific language. So start cultivating and getting that language. Look for those words, write them down and just continue to note them. Then notice if there's any events held in your specific market. Now, for me, as I started to do that research, I found that there aren't really events for chronic pain sufferers or chronic pain patients, which is really my end market. And I might have to step back and actually look for events for the service providers for people with chronic pain. And that might be how I have to reach out to reach those people because or I might have to create some events. I'm actually kind of excited about the idea of creating events for people with chronic pain. The only struggle with that is I have to be creating them on the high end of the productivity spe spectrum because 
a lot of people with chronic pain and the ones I was, I was aiming toward at first were people like me, you know, bedridden, couldn't get out of bed. Well, people that are bedridden, if that's the case, we might have to do like online virtual events. So there's all kinds of cool ways to get at that. But I have to dig a little deeper because I'm not sure that there are actual events unless you're considering online courses or webinars events, which they are events for actual chronic pain sufferers. So do the same thing for your niche, for your topic. Go out and find out, are there events held, physical events? Are there virtual events? A lot of topics have virtual summits. Almost every topic you can imagine nowadays has a virtual summit or a group that does uh, podcasting and interviews for and then produces virtual summits or virtual events. So start listening and finding out what and where those are. Take a look at a couple of them, go to a couple of them, buy into a couple of them. I bought into to dozens of different virtual events as I was going through my personal development phase, which I'm always in, because once you start personal development, I think that it's a lifelong process. Maybe not for everybody, it has been for me. I am a lifelong work in progress. So look and find out what kind of events are available for your specific, the customers you want to get at, and also the providers of the services of the customers that you want to reach. Because those can be your strategic partners. You can advertise at those events. You don't even have to put the events on yourself. You can just be a participant or a sponsor or an advertiser at a lot of events. That's another reason you want to start looking for them and researching. Then we're going to look for all of the markets and the sub-markets, celebrities and gurus. If your market's a pretty good market, it's going to have people that are already celebrities or gurus or specialists or teaching on other topics in that market. So start finding and listing them out because they're going to become part of your Dream 100. We're going to talk about something called the Dream 100 later. And I will tell you, it is the most powerful strategy to achieve anything you want in life, any goal, any objective, and especially when it comes to building businesses and getting your message out. So start listing who those experts are. Find those experts and list who they are. And after that, I think tomorrow what we're going to do is I'm going to do a live, I just thought of this now, a live funnel hacking workshop. And I'm going to do a little workshop where I will actually show you how I funnel hack the top three competitors. I might only have time for one. So maybe my top competitor for my market. That'll be lesson six. I'm going to do an actual funnel hack for one of my competitors. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So stay tuned. I'm going to do a funnel hack for my competitors. It's going to be somebody in chronic pain. I'm not sure who it's going to be yet. I'm going to go do my research again and decide who that number one competitor would be who offers something similar to what I'm thinking about offering with my chronic pain protocol. So do your homework. I will get your worksheet produced soon. And I will see you tomorrow with another awesome lesson from Expert Secrets. Bye.